Welcome back to a special commitment edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie O'Leary. We have our second transfer commitment of the offseason for Rutgers basketball. Former Princeton forward Zach Martini committed today. He was a guy who has visited Rutgers twice in the last week. Um, if you listen to the podcast, you should know things were trending really well for Rutgers in this one, and he finally made it official tonight. We kind of want to go go through what's next with the transfer portal for Rutgers this off season, and go through. The... <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I I also don't have a martini. I got a, a fancy beer and a fancy glass though. So mm, cheers to the fancy. commitment. Uh, welcome, welcome to the Scarlet Knights, uh, Zach Martini. We got to drink more on the pod. You're always recording <laughs> in the morning, uh, nope. and you know I you know I have another job I got to do, so I can't necessarily right, enough, uh, get too get too burnt up in the, the middle of the day. But I'd love to. Uh, but before we get into any of that, our presenting sponsor is Night and Day Apparel. Calling all Rutgers students, alumni, and fans. Are you looking for new and unique Rutgers merchandise? Night and Day Apparel has you covered. From t-shirts to hoodies, drinkware to pet accessories, Night and Day focuses on providing Ru the Rutgers community with exclusive one-of-a-kind tailgating products. Be sure to check out the links in today's podcast description to their website and social media so you can stay on top of everything Night and Day, including new merch drops and promotional announcements. Shop now and keep shopping. Uh, we're also sponsored by the Cut App. Uh, as you know, we've sponsored with a social betting platform called the Cut App. It's a peer-to-peer -peer betting platform that allows you to bet directly against your buddies and other fans. That's right. You can join the TKR crew on Cut today and bet directly against Richie and I on your favorite sports, pop culture, politics, whatever your uh, whatever suits your fancy there. Uh, Cut is the ultimate put-your-money-where-your-mouth-is platform. It's illegal in 40-plus states. Be sure to follow at Cut, at cut Bet on all your social media platforms and download the app via the app store, cut.com. You can use the code believe Rutgers at the L E A V Rutgers for a 10% deposit bonus when you sign up. All right, let's get into this martini commitment. Um, much needed veteran presence for Rutgers. Um, he is a guy who was a part of a Princeton team that's, you know, had a winning re well beyond winning record in his three years playing there. I think they went 70 and 21 in his three years as a Princeton Tiger, culminating uh, last year with the Sweet 16 run. This is a guy who knows what it takes to win in general, and he's shown it with the the roles he's played on Princeton. Previously, he was a guy who was the sixth or seventh man coming off the bench. This year, he was a full-time starter, but depending on the game, like you saw against Rutgers, he was playing a, an undersized five role against mm -hmm. other teams. It was just a spread out kind of uh, small ball lineup. He, from his quotes that I've read and from what you've, you know, heard from talking to him directly, this is a guy who just wants to come in and be a part of a winning team next year, which is exactly the kind of guy that, that Steve Peichel is probably looking for in the portal um, and that this team needed. So tell us about kind of what went into this commitment and kind of the impact Zach Martini will have on next year's team. Yeah, I mean, um, they kind of just reached out relatively quickly. Um, we kind of reported, I think we actually broke the news on, uh, the pen, on uh, Rutgers' offer. who it's a close one. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, we broke the news on the Rutgers' offer back on the 23rd, 22nd, whatever podcast that was. Um, Rutgers got involved almost immediately after he entered. He entered on the 21st. I think it was late on the 21st. A day went by, and they offered immediately. Um, Rutgers got him to campus last Friday for an unofficial visit. Got him back to campus this Monday. He went to football practice because the guy has an allure for Greg Schiano. He wanted to meet him. Like, um, so tip of the cap to Greg Schiano for getting a little bit of an assist here. Um, you, yeah, you know. and this is this is from a family who has been Rutgers fans for a long time. He grew up mm -hmm. going to Rutgers games. His brother probably would have come to Rutgers if he had an offer. He's a quarterback at Cornell right now. Yep. Um, so this is a guy who has been a Rutgers fan and probably – would have loved to come here out of high school, but you know, some people take the circuitous route to where they're eventually supposed to be. And that's seemingly what uh, Zach uh, is doing. Sorry to cut you off there. No, no, you're good. Um, I've talked to Chad, actually his brother quite a bit in the past. Um, he, he was actually one of the more impressive uh, quarterbacks back in the day um, out of high school. And he ended up at Cornell and he's, he's a pretty good one there. I don't know if he's playing there at all, to be honest, but uh, he's been to Rutgers a bunch and I've talked to him about that in the past too, but uh, yeah, this seems like a Jersey kid through and through. Um, they have a pretty good relationship with Gil St. Bernard's from the Paul Mulcahy days. Uh, they haven't landed anyone really since there, since from the school since then. Um, the school's not as good as it used to be either because now kids are going to Roselle. They're going to 
uh, what's that new one? College Achieve um, down at mm. Asbury that the Roselle coach is now running. Uh, former Roselle coach is now running. Uh, there's just so many schools in Jersey uh, to begin with. But uh, yeah, another another connection there. Um, and end of the day, you're getting like a sharpshooter. This guy's percentage was 30 and a half from three last year. This guy would be number one on your team this past season in three point percentage. He played the center role. So I do personally think his rebounds took a little bit of a dip for two reasons. Number one, he was playing an undersized center role against bigger centers. Um, there's not a ton of great centers in the Ivy League, but Danny Wolf's there, and Danny Wolf's pretty damn good. Yep. Um, other than that, if you look at his uh, front court mate, Caden Pierce, Caden Pierce averaged almost, uh, I think he was third or second in the Ivy League in rebounds per game, and he had nine and a half. So yeah. there, there's the rebounds. It's the, the one guy's boxing out, and this other guy's grabbing the board. Simple as that. Yep. Um, I think shifting him to a now a four man role <clears throat> should be very interesting. Um, I think he's going to open things, or he'll be wide open when when Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper on the court, and mm-hmm. he has a quick release. So as soon as he gets that ball, he's he's just pulling it. Um, I've seen a couple clips on the video that we just tweeted out that guys are maybe two three feet away from him defending him, which is crazy to me. And just quick pull, quick pull, quick pull. Loves that corner three, it seems like, too, which is which is great. You just got to spot him up in the corner while Ace drives. Everyone collapses, and there you go, corner three, done. So I like this get a lot. I think he's your starting four, personally. Um, <clears throat> now, that could depend on who you get in terms of another guard slash wing. Things could change, but right now, as of the way the roster is built currently, I have him as the starting four with Ace as the starting three. And I think it's a good compliment for each other. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you just look at all of his numbers, even from a, you know, just from a base box score to the advanced analytics, everything mm-hmm. about this guy just screams like smart player who is very efficient overall offensively. Um, if you just look at his raw numbers, he averaged 8.4 points <clears throat> per game this year, 3.3 rebounds, one assist a game, half a steal a game. Uh, he didn't block many shots. He shot 83% from the line. Almost 39% from three. He shot uh, 45% from the field, um, 71% from two. Uh, if you look at his shot chart, it is like an analytics dream. I know we've talked about this previously on the pod. But if you look at all the shots he took this year, overall, he took um, 153 shots, 191 shots on the, whole, on the season. 156 of them were from three. And an additional. Yep. An additional 29 of them were at the rim. So of his 191 shots, only six came from the mid-range. Just absolutely beautiful. As you can tell, very high percentage around the rim, which is what you want to see. Shot 83% at the rim. Um, If you look from three, he's clearly, he really likes the right corner and the top of the key, which is great. Um, I mean, he's, yeah, if he's got a place he likes to be, let's just make sure that he's there as often as he can possibly uh, be there. Yeah. Um, but overall, like if you just look at some of the quotes from, from Jerry Carino's article that came out earlier, he just talks about, you know, being willing to play basically any role that is asked of him. This is a guy who, uh, you know, he came off the bench most of his career. He was a full-time starter this year. He started all 29 of Princeton's games. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to hear out of a guy who's coming into your program. He, he said the things he's most excited for is, is, you know, being a leader, which is greatly needed yeah. next year, you know, you're going to have him and Jeremiah right now and Dar- and uh, Tyson Acuff being those veteran leaders. You probably want to look for a little bit, a few more of those guys in the portal, which we'll get to soon. Um, but this is a guy, if you look at his offensive rating as well on Bart Torvik, the highest rated offensive player for Rutgers this year was Andre Hyatt at a 104 rating. And basically 100 is average. And then I think every 10 points is like a standard deviation in their rating system. So a 110 would be one standard deviation uh, higher than the average. A 120 would be two standard deviations and so on and so forth. Zach Martini's offensive rating, remind you, highest on Rutgers, 104 from Andre Hyatt. Zach Martini's rating was 124 this season. Just a hyper-efficient offensive player. And, you know, if you look at his shot chart, it shows that he was intentionally efficient. So he was only taking shots, and that's part on the, the actual uh, coaching and play design at Princeton, but also probably partially due to, you know, Zach Martini as a player. Because I'm sure that there were opportunities where he had to take like a half step backwards to get beyond the three-point line to take a shot. Or 
you know, you had a, a an open look from the mid range and you did a pump fake and drove to the rim. Like those are all things that you need to kind of just have an innate sense of, or it needs to be drilled in by your coaching staff that these are the things that you should be looking to do. Either way, he knows what he should be doing on offense. And maybe that's something that he can bring to, to Rutgers this year, this contagious efficiency on offense in terms of shot selection. Yeah, I mean, end of the day, Mitch is a hell of a coach at Princeton. There's no question about it. Absolutely. Um, he's taught him quite a few things. If you just watch his tape, too, like he's he can go in transition if need be. So there's there's the check mark number one because, like I said yesterday, and you I, like I said the last pod, and you saw it again yesterday with Dylan and all these superstars on the court. They're going to run in transition. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> now they're not going to do that all the time, but it sounds like most of the time they probably will be. Uh, but he can move in transition. He's a good. He's good on the pick and pop. He's good on the pick and roll. And like most of these baskets you see in like in a shot chart, like you think he's just getting it on the block and just like pulling a post move and going up. No, he's like actually cutting like like you're supposed yep. to in offense. And it's it's just insane to see because uh, you haven't seen it at Rutgers in a year or two, but maybe more than that. But uh, yeah, no, this is a, this is a really good get. Um, I think his offensive game and helps you not only that, but his veteran presence is going to help you. I think he's a nice compliment. And plus, you help your three-point shooting. Name of the game is sh- offense. I'm sorry. It's not defense anymore. Now, are they still going to play defense? Pike's still going to in- ingrain defense into their head. Um, look at Alabama. They're in, the, they're in the Final Four right now. You know what their offense is? Number one in the country. You know what their defense is? It's like 360. Like, now, obviously, I'm not comparing the two, saying Rutgers is Alabama. But there's also teams like Connecticut where it's like 20 and 20. So, I mean, it's just you need to have some type of offense coming forward if you want to make a deep run next year, and I think this kid helps that offense. He absolutely does. Uh, he's no slouch on defense either. Um, no. You know, when when Princeton played Yale this year, um, one of the best players in the Ivy League conference is, is Danny Wolf, who's a mm-hmm. seven-foot center. He's now in the portal. It sounds like <laughs> he, he's going to probably at Michigan. <laughs> but uh, he might be the most talented guy in the uh, the Ivy League, and – I'm already ducking for some one of our, our fan favorites who's going to have a, an opinion about that. Um, oh my God. But, you know, he held him to O of 8 shooting on the day, and he was playing undersized. And this is just a guy who just knows what it takes, and he does. he's willing to do, 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 the, do the dirty work. And I, I want to compliment Jerry Carino again for the great work he did on the, the article that he put out um, because there was talk of, I think it was his first year at Princeton, you know, he's in practice, he takes a really hard charge, he has a collapsed lung, and, he, you know, he's in the hospital for five days, it takes him six weeks of rehab to get back on the court, and then the first game back, um, he gets onto the court, and one of the first plays, he takes another charge, and that's just kind of the guy he is, like, he's fearless, <laughs> he's just does whatever it takes to win, and those are guys you need on your team, especially in crunch time, in big moments, where, you know, I think we're all hoping for a deep tournament run next year, and Given what yeah. we saw at the Army or at the Michigan McDonald's All American game last night, we have plenty of reason to be pretty hopeful about the guys we're bringing in. Obviously, oh, yeah. we'll talk a lot more about that in a little bit. But this is a guy that you need. You need that kind of mentality, and you need a guy who is brought in, who has the experience, and is just willing to do what it takes to win games. That's very contagious. I, I know that for a fact because anybody who's played any level of sport, if the best, if one of the, the oldest guys on the team is just willing to just shovel shit more than anybody else you're not going to get away with not shoveling shit and that's what martini does and that's going to be somebody who everyone can look up to on the team next year yeah i'm excited to see what he can do um i know people are concerned about the rebounding they're concerned that he's not scoring double digits which is just stupid but like he's it's not like he's not scoring double digits it's he's not averaging double digits i should say yep. um like he's had double digits he scored double digits against Rutgers. do we do we even forget that one like yep. um his last game of the season, he had 17 points on 5 of 11 from 3. I, I think I would take that on any Rutgers game this year <laughs> at yeah, all. Yeah. Um, shooting is shooting, too, at the end of the day. I know people are going to say the Ivy League does make a, a little bit of a difference. It's not the same level as the Big Ten, but shooting is shooting, especially when you're shooting from where he is. Like Most of his like, shots aren't like at the line. They're like way beyond the arc. Um, yeah. I just I love this kid. I think he's going to be really good. And like you said, uh, he just he's going to put it all out on the court, and that's that stuff's contagious. And there you go, you have him, you have Ace, who's going to do all kinds of crazy shit. You have Dylan, who's just really smart basketball player, and they they didn't stop raving about that the other day. But <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, 
Um, let's talk about what's next for Rutgers in the portal. So obviously we have two, in my opinion, really high level commitments from mm-hmm. uh, Tyson Acuff, the guard out of Eastern Michigan, and now Zach Martini, the forward out of Princeton. We probably have two ships that we're going to give out um, to additional transfer portal guys. Where do those ships go? I know Martini's <clears throat> teammate. Uh, Matt Alaco was mm-hmm. rumored to be a guy Rutgers was kind of keying in on. Yep. Um, obviously, we need a big. What are you hearing on the other? What are you hearing on Alaco? And then we'll talk about the big. So Matt Alaco um, was supposed to visit Monday with Martini. He was supposed to visit last week with Martini. He ended up making neither visit. Um, he did make a visit to Ohio State last week. They did offer him. Um, it sounds like Ohio State wants him as a backup type guard. Now, that's changed a little bit in the past 24 hours for the sole fact that, excuse me, apparently uh, St. John's is making a play for starting guard Roddy Gale out of Ohio State. They're trying to push him into the portal. Um, If he enters the portal, I don't expect him to pull a Michi Johnson and return to Ohio State, so (laughs) there's that. Um, So they they got a guard this weekend in Michi Johnson, a former Ohio State guy, so that's one guard. They got Bruce Thornton back, that's another guard. Matt Alaco could technically slide into that third guard spot because a new slash interim slash former head coach um, does run three guard lineups from time to time. And I actually did it quite a bit since he took over as interim, but um, yeah, it sounds like Matt Alaco is going to stay home and probably more than likely going to end up at Ohio state. So you'll probably see him next year, which sucks because I think he is a really good player. Um, he did grow up. He's only 18 minutes away from uh, his hometown's 18 minutes away from Columbus. So it's, it is tough. I know his dad's a Jersey guy. I know he played in Jersey for four years, but to be able to play down the street from your hometown, I can never blame a kid on that whatsoever. So um, yep. it sounds like that's what's going to happen there with Alaco. Yeah, I mean, you got to hope that <clears throat> Rutgers still has a chance here. Obviously, they're going to continue to look at um, additional guards or wings. Is there any mm-hmm. names that stick out for you right now? Because I know we, we previously talked about certain guys, one in you know Dante Maddox Jr., who's mm-hmm. seemingly eliminated Rutgers. Yep. Uh, we have a bunch of guys planning visits. Is there anyone else to keep an eye on from the guard or wing role before we talk about a big? Um, I'd probably say, let's see, who is on this list? I just had it pulled up. Uh, Zach Laput did talk with Mike Larkin, and he was supposed to have a conversation with Steve Peichel this week. I'm told that conversation hasn't happened yet. He's the D2 guard out of Bentley. Um, mm-hmm. Potential name to keep an eye on. Uh, who's the other one? Bensley Joseph was one we mentioned because he was a former Rutgers target out of high school, but we're told that's probably not going to happen. I believe he's at St. John's today and Xavier or somewhere else. I forget where he's visiting. Uh, oh, Providence. It's Providence or um, St. John's right now for him. They did reach out to Clark Schlodger. I don't know how to pronounce yeah, that the one. Kid from um, Penn. Yeah, the kid from Penn. That was a long time ago, though, but he's been relatively quiet, and they, they've, they've been relatively quiet with the portal. I mean, Acuff kind of came out of nowhere. Whereas, um, I guess Martini really didn't. So they're quiet yeah, with no. some, they're quiet, not quiet with others. So I would say those are the only guards kind of on the radar right now. There's no one really standing out, uh, unless I'm missing someone. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think you are either. So let's move on to bigs. Obviously, a lot <laughs> of names have been brought up. We've you know heard Amari Williams. That was a target that Rutgers seemingly was interested in. He named yeah. four official visits. Uh, none of them were Rutgers uh, recently. Um, last pod, we talked about a, a litany of guys that Rutgers was showing interest in. What are you hearing on the big man front? Is there any movement on any of those individual guys or any new names we should be looking out for? Um, I think we mentioned them all. I think we mentioned, uh, Gus Yaldin, William Kyle, the third and Ruben Chignello recently. Um, I think we mentioned on the last pod, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we mentioned all those three. Um, nothing new really to update on those three. Now, I do know there was a new guy that entered the portal from England. He's technically at Montana State or Utah State. Utah, Utah State, State, yeah. Um, I forget his exact name. I can't find it now. Uh, great Asobor. So, I mean, I would keep an eye on him because he is from England. Most of those guys, um, you could sell on the fact that, hey, a quasi is here, England. East Coast is a lot closer than England than Utah is, so hear sure. me out. Um, <laughs> he put up some good numbers, though, last year. He was a Mountain West first team. Mountain West was pretty damn good. Uh, not in the tournament, yeah. but they were good in regular season. Um, but uh, first team Mountain West selection uh, averaged 17 and 9, almost 18 points and 9 rebounds. So I- I'd say he's a pretty good center. Um, I looked into him a little bit. He didn't have many offers out of high school. Um, 
but yeah, I would definitely keep an eye on him just because of the connection to geographically, basically. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I know that a little inside baseball here, the staff is going to be at the final four this weekend mm -hmm. and there's a quiet or dead period, leaves. not even a quiet period. <laughs> What'd you say? I said if their plane ever leaves, apparently everyone's getting delayed right now because this. Yeah, crazy the weather storm. in the Northeast is a complete shit show right now. But I mean, look at UConn; you, they're they're delayed too. Yeah, so See. you have a dead period starting tomorrow at noon that runs through next Thursday at noon. Mm -hmm. So nobody can be on campus. You're not supposed to be able to contact recruits. Not saying that yeah. won't happen, but basically, like, there's a pause in the portal game for a week. <clears throat> Since the staff is going to be at the Final Four, I don't expect much recruiting news to drop in the next, let's just say, three or four days. Um, yeah. So I assume that they're pretty happy to get half of their class locked up before their mm -hmm. their mandatory dead period break. Yeah. Um, so more to come next week on where things stand with big men where things stand with another guard or wing, because they're not done. I know that for sure. They are definitely going to add at least two more portal guys to be determined who they actually go after. Now, two things. Number one, Aaron Bradshaw, I believe, entered the portal recently, or he's about to. One of the two. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not sure exactly. I keep a close eye on I'm not going to like say fully like monitor what he's doing. I'd just say I'd keep like a little eye on him just in case. You never know. Um, now, who was the Wake Forest kid again? That is Andrew Carr. Andrew Carr. So now, you know what's interesting about this? Um, per Troy Donovan, William Kyle the third, South Dakota State Center, uh, Wake Forest is the team to beat there. Interesting. He is a center. Um, I'm center. Yeah, and you wouldn't expect two bigs to, uh, or at least two primary high-level bigs to be on the same team, especially a team like Wake Forest. That's no shot at Wake Forest, but... Um, no, most teams, I mean. Most teams. So that's very interesting. It might uh, indicate that he's kind of one foot out the door. So that's mm -hmm. definitely a situation to monitor. I'm not saying that Rutgers will even be in his top grouping of schools, but Oops. there are a lot of yeah. things that would point to Rutgers at least showing interest. Um, yeah, I mean, Westchester, PA, Delaware um, alum. Does it count as an alum if he didn't graduate? Uh, I don't think he graduated there, but he did spend his first two years at Delaware, and then he moved on to Wake Forest. So, um, you never know. I used to you live w right outside Westchester. That is about an hour uh, drive from Rutgers, so it is an easy drive up uh, 676 to um, BA Turnpike, then right on to 95. So it's, <laughs> it's a pretty easy ride to get to uh, to Rutgers from, from Westchester in that general area. Um, so enough. stay tuned to uh, your podcast feed, stay tuned to the boards because there will be plenty, plenty more <laughs> recruiting news starting probably next week. Oh. Um, but I'd say the most exciting stuff or the most exciting uh, actual game action for Rutgers in months was the McDonald's All-American game and scrimmage yesterday yeah. uh, or scrimmage and All-American game the last couple days. Mm -hmm. um, if you were under a rock um, and haven't heard the news, uh, Rutgers commits Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper were both participants in the McDonald's All-American game. Um, mm -hmm. Ace finished second in the dunk contest, which was held on Monday night. Um, they also had a scrimmage on Sunday, I believe, where Ace just looked otherworldly, going against Cooper Flag most of the game, just basically getting whatever he wanted from fadeaways to up and under layups. Uh, to put back dunks, he was just all over the place. He looked like the best player in the scrimmage. And then last night for the All-American game itself, Dylan, in my opinion, was head and shoulders above everyone in that game. He won the yeah. co-MVP with uh, Derek Queen, the center who is going to Maryland next year. But Dylan's stats, he led the West team in points, assists, and rebounds. He finished the night with 22 points, five assists, six rebounds, mm -hmm. no turnovers, one steal, one block, uh, and he shot uh, um, nine of 16 from the field, and he shot two of five from beyond the arc. He looked incredible. I, I think if you walked away from that game, not just like being in awe of not, he's not like the best athlete on the floor, and nobody ever claimed he was in his recruitment. But he is just a guy who never seemingly makes a mistake out there. He's always making the right decision. 
he's a guy who has this innate instinct to just like know when to take take a drive, when to take a shot. He shoots with confidence all the time, whether it be in mm-hmm. transition, whether it be, you know, he gets a, a, a kick out pass. He just always seems to kind of be super tuned in to what he should be doing on the court. Uh, what was your takeaways from the McDonald's game last night? Yeah, I mean, Dylan was, like you said, far and away probably the best player. Um, the fact that he had no turnovers after playing 25, 26 minutes, 25, 25 minutes. Yeah, he led the, um, the team in minutes too, which was wild. <laughs> Yeah, him and Ace actually played the same exact, which was was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the fact that he played 20, nearly twenty five minutes and zero turnovers after some of the passes he made too, like these were tight windows he was squeezing the ball through. Yep. Um, whether it be on little stuff, whether it be on alley oops, uh, just quick pick and rolls, like it was just a beautiful performance from him overall. Uh, he really shined, and you heard the announcers just rave about his his knowledge of the game and his just his smarts. When it comes to just holding on to the basketball at the end of the day, um, so you don't have to worry about turnovers. I'm sure uh, when he gets to Rutgers, I'm sure I'll have a couple. Like it's just down to happen. Yep. But, um, yeah, no. And then uh, one of the biggest knocks in his game was was his three point shooting. He was the second best three point shooter, maybe behind maybe third if you count Donnie Green. Um, but like two of five, and like he he had some nice looks. There was um, maybe one questionable shot the entire night from him, but. Nine of sixteen, that's a great percentage. Two of five, that's still a pretty good percentage from three. Like Oh yeah. Um hit free throws, thank God. Uh and, then, and he doesn't he rebounds too. He's rebounding. He's got steals. Mm-hmm. Like he was doing everything, a little bit of everything on top of leading the team in scoring. Uh yeah, he led the team in scoring. Yep. Uh, almost led the game in scoring. If it wasn't for um Derek Derek Queen, I want to say maybe. For some reason. I want to say lightning queen. Uh, it's just in my head. <laughs> but uh if it wasn't for Derek Queen just having a hot start to the game where I think he had six their first six points, first four points, something like that. But yep. um I'm shocked they didn't give Dylan the ball to end the game. I'm a little upset to be honest because I get it. Like um what was his name? Um, Trey Johnson. Trey Johnson he was kinda on fire a little bit from three. He was five of six before that last shot. But he just took such a stupid shot. He was more than like six feet beyond the arc and he just chucked like a random he didn't even set his feet. He just like chucked like a random three. Yep. But Dylan was the guy that was on fire all game. You have stars like DJ Edgecombe, who's who's notable for having like some really stellar late game performances. Ace Bailey's have some late game performances. Like I'm giving it to one of my star guys. I'm sorry, Trey, but like I'm giving it to like Dylan or Ace or VJ. Even Fiore's got some moments where he's the star. Like obviously, I'm not giving it to him from deep, but like the other guys, like I have to give him a star player. Like I just. That yeah. pissed me off a little bit, but um, yeah, no, great performance. And um, Ace, he had, he takes questionable shots. There's no question about it. Um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes he makes those questionable shots, and you're like, holy shit, this is the best player on the planet. Other times, it's he misses, like last night. But in the scrimmage the day before, he was one of the best players by far. So it's like, it's tough. Yeah. And and I want to talk about a few things. There was, I don't know where the article was, but I was reading it earlier. I have some quotes here from anonymous NBA scouts. So there were NBA scouts from every single NBA team Mm -hmm. at every day of the McDonald's All-American practices, the scrimmage, the games. Here's what they said about the Rutgers commits. I'll start off with Ace Bailey. Ace has the highest ceiling in this class. He takes tough shots, but he also makes tough shots. He's not there yet. But he's a guy I'm taking number one in this class. Cooper is probably safer, but I'm swinging for the fences. Cooper Flag is probably a high-end number two in this league, whereas Ace has the upside of being an all-star. Another scout said, when he's making shots, it looks similar to what we see in our league. Now, here's what they were saying about Dylan Harper. I think he's as short uh, as a bet as anybody in this class, including Cooper Flag. His body's improved. He looks like a big guard now physically, and his passing, people around him always play better with him. He's one you have you have to watch multiple times to get a full feel on. He's not going to dunk on you or do anything flashy on the floor, but he's willing to do anything to impact a win. I'm putting the ball in his hands. For me, he's the best decision maker in this class. He has a Jalen Brunson pathway. He won't wow you with his athleticism, but he'll get to his spots and make plays. I love his passing. He's more athletic than he gets credit for. But some of those may be because of his feel. He's always in the right spot. 
He is starting to make his shots. He's a big guard, and I want the ball in his hands. That is some high praise from multiple different NBA scouts that they got quotes on the record for. I don't, again, I just screenshotted these from earlier. I don't know where, uh, I, I wish I could cite the article, but some really high praise for Rutgers commits from uh, NBA scouts. Yeah, I sent out a text <clears throat> as soon as uh, you said that before, um, when you sent it to me before. Um, I sent out a text real quick to one of my NBA scouts that I know, and uh, it should be getting back to me soon, but I uh, will get those quotes on the site as soon as they are up. We have done um, stuff with him in the past, so it will be one of the scouts I've talked to in the past, but they've always raved about Ace. They've always raved about Dylan. Um, these two are going to be phenomenal, and I just – I'm very excited to be able to cover them next year because this is going to be a different year for Rutgers. I don't think fans yeah. are ready for it. And last night's just a small glimpse of what is going to happen at the rack next year. A hundred percent. And if you didn't get to see it live, if you go on ESPN plus, if you pay for ESPN plus, and I know a lot of people don't like yeah. to do that, but you can watch a full replay of the game. I can't recommend it highly enough, mainly because it is essentially a, a two to three hour Rutgers promo video. They talk yeah. so much about Rutgers. It is just effusive Rutgers praise, how much, you know, Rutgers fans should be excited to have these two guys. They have, um, I know Dylan spoke in the, the, uh, the post-game presser, but it, it is just like a 100% feel-good Rutgers story all night. So, mm. excuse me, I'm definitely going to rewatch it, but if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, and if you're on our YouTube account, um, every Dylan Bucket is on one of the videos below. Might be at yep. the end of this video too. Actually, I don't know. It's somewhere in there. Yeah, it might. Uh, it might recommend it to you next. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, there's not yeah. many opportunities for Rutgers to get that much love on a national broadcast for any sport, um, especially one that had that many future professional athletes in it. So definitely check yeah. that out. Um, Gonna be fun. Super excited about this commitment. Super excited to see how this team rounds out. Uh, Football wise, we'll hit on that quickly. Um, no scrimmage this week. Uh, we previously yep. reported there was, but they're only allowed three scrimmages, including the spring game. Mm -hmm. So there'll be three straight Saturdays starting next Saturday, not this upcoming Saturday. So they'll still have a practice this Good Saturday. Luck to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Pat Flaherty gave a great interview um, this past week. It's on our channel. It's another video you should definitely check out. He is a super personable guy, ton of character. Uh, 100% worth uh, listening to. Who is next on tap, uh, coaching-wise, to speak to the media this week? Ooh, I know it too. I know it. Oh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. The will new be there defensive tomorrow. lineman, not the yeah. Irish actor. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> the, the new, new defensive, defensive line new coach. defensive line coach. I should say. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, he'll be. Uh, he'll be talking tomorrow. Um, I'm excited to see what he has to say. I've I've known Colin for a while now, um, because he's been at Rutgers for with Kent State for all those uh, summer camps and stuff like that. So yep. definitely uh, going to be fun to see him on the Rutgers sideline now. Uh, he hasn't, I don't think he's landed a commitment yet, technically. Um, that's been, he's been the main recruiter of, but uh, I'm very excited to, uh, to see what he can do on the recruiting trail. Yeah, he he's a guy who um, a lot of people around Kent State's program were sad to see him go. He was around mm -hmm. that program for a long time. Um, sounds like a guy with a lot of juice. So it's exciting. It'll be exciting to hear these guys talk. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Anything we you wanted to hit on before we head out? Yeah, one quick thing. So we're trying to get this channel up to four thousand. We're at thirty nine eighteen right now. I got a bunch of different shit we are gonna give away, and <laughs> it includes uh, what is this? Say? Oh, drop this. Look at that bad boy. Wow, that bad boy. Ooh. Is that a, an official game worn Stitched? Isaiah Pacheco not jersey? Game, not game worn. Okay. But, um, we can see if he'll sign it. You might sign it. You never know. Could text him. See what's up. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it might be worth it, but they have pretty, pretty cool Rutgers uh, that is sick. memorabilia right there. So you never know. We got some stuff like that. We got um, some KTR stuff I think we're going to give away as well. Um, I'm trying to think what else. On the Banks what ears, about, if you're 21. What about the uh, the cornhole boards? Oh, Rutgers cornhole board. I have to dig that out of the closet. Um, not used. It's just I restored it because I just... I don't know. There's nowhere else to put it. And I just can't pull it out like I can with this stuff. But Rutgers Cornhole Board, we got a lot of stuff. Um, Rutgers TKR T-shirt. Yeah, TKR so if you're, watch, like, if, you, yeah, if you're watching this video and uh, you have a thing that you'd rather us give away next, whether it be the pop jersey or the Rutgers Cornhole Boards, obviously Richie's not going to pull up those like you can just pull a jersey out of a shelf. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, 
the one with the most comments will give away next. We're looking to hopefully give that away ahead of the spring mm -hmm. game, which is April 27th. That's Saturday. So uh, yeah, let's get this this channel beefed up and we'll give away some more stuff. But if, if you have yeah. a thing you'd rather have us give away, put it in the comments below. Yeah. Uh, but we thank you once again for listening. I know this is going to come out uh, a little bit on the later side. Maybe we'll wait in the morning. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, 930 here now. But yeah. we will, uh, yeah, well, it'll be out first thing in the morning. So you guys, uh, April 4th, you'll have it cool. up in your feed. Sounds but, good. But uh, for, for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Night Report Podcast, signing off.